those pitfalls? Let me start from the beginning, as they say. 10,000 BC. That's far enough back, right? Okay, 10,000 BC. We were all hunters and gatherers. We got around, followed the animal herds, we gathered the nuts that we found along the way. And after a while, at some point or another, we realized that when we passed by the same place, that same, the same kind of crop was growing there. We decided, hey, we can actually depend on that crop growing there. That stopped to following the herd, let's sit here and tend this crop. So that's when cities started. That's when little villages started. That's when cities started. They grew up, they found water, they learned how to domesticate plants. They learned how to domesticate animals. And from the natural cycle, we got all of mankind's necessities. Fiber to clothe ourselves. Fuel to burn for energy and warmth to eat medicine for all our ills, and food. That's what comes up out of the ground. Right? That's what you get out of the ground. Yeah, natural cycle. And our agrarian and agricultural cycle built up around it. And farmers became very valued citizens. And being able to depend on a food stream every year became a very valuable thing. And so land was the means of producing wealth. If you had a farm, you could make a decent living off of it. You could grow fiber, cotton, uh, uh, hemp, uh, you know, sisal. You could grow fuel. That's what the, you know, all the, uh, I'll explain that in just a second. You can grow mess and you can grow food. Okay? Along the lines, about 1900, the chemical companies started to discover petroleum. And said, gee, look at all the things we can make out of petroleum. We can make all these things out of petroleum. We can make uh, plastics and we can make clothes and we can make fuel, and we can do all these things with petroleum. And so, in anticipation of World War II, in response to the Depression, they did what's called the New Deal, where business and government got together, and they drove a wedge into the natural cycle, and created the synthetic cycle. and the fuel all of a sudden starts being created and produced and distributed by the synthetic manufacturers. 1937. The New Deal legislation named corruption and named criminalization of the farmer and those people who produce from the natural cycle. And all of a sudden, they regulate what food you can grow, they regulate what medicine you can grow, they regulate what fuel you can they had the law making ability to regulate all of that for the first time. They take into their possession the right to tell you what seed you can plant in the ground, what seed you can. And the way they did it was through the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act. Because it turns out that marijuana, also known as cannabis, also known as hemp, is the number one fiber on earth the number one fuel on earth, the number one medicine on earth, and the number one food on earth. The hemp plant that our grandfathers in the state of Kentucky used to grow by the tens of thousands of acres is by far and away the most valuable plant on the planet Earth. And it is, uh, I have to tell you that uh, hemp is, when it comes down to fuel, hemp is petroleum. That's what hemp is. All petroleum is is liquefied vegetative matter that was grown eons ago and trapped and stored the sun's energy through photosynthesis. And then was set aside by nature and put through a liquefaction process over eons into petroleum or compacted into coal and peat. And what we're burning in our furnaces right now, burning in our, uh, burning in our cars right now, is the sun's energy that was trapped and stored by that biomass. Bio and hemp is the most efficient photosynthesizing biomass on the planet. You get 20 barrels of petroleum on May 10th. If we planted 6 or 7 percent of the U.S. agricultural land in hemp, we wouldn't have to import another drop of oil. It's also the number one medicine on earth. Marijuana. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about it. cannabis, marijuana. And hemp and marijuana are both cannabis. All right, just to cultivate in different directions. 
So there are people who do not want us growing our own medicine. They don't want us growing our own fuel. It's a, and there's, there's two forms of fuel in, in the hemp crop, by the way. You got the biomass of the stalk and the leaf and everything that gets converted into, you know, into a petroleum methanol. And then you've got the little cannabis seed, the little marijuana seed. Every marijuana seed is a little hemp capsule, it's a little oil capsule. It's 35 to 40 percent oil by weight. If I have 100 pounds of hemp seed, I have 35 to 40 pounds of the premier motor lubricating oil on the planet. It is, as constant constant viscosity, it is the highest quality naturally occurring seed oil on the planet. And uh, in, I, I had uh, about 100 pounds of it. Uh, I uh, poured uh, Willie Nelson and I poured hip oil in my Mercedes diesel in 1991 proved across Kentucky to prove that hip oil is in fact a fuel. <coughs> and he really started his biofuel company after he got to spend that year. Remember what it was like to, to drive across the state on that. And so uh, that same oil you can pour in your crankcase because it will lubricate your engine. We used it in during World War II in Kentucky because they used it to get that oil to lubricate the engines in high altitude aircraft because our other oil sources had been depleted. You can take that same oil and you can pour it into your wok and stir fry your vegetables. It's the most nutritious food you can put in your body. MC is gruel. That's what the gruel is. It has an eight essential amino you know, acids necessary for human growth and development. It's the number one source of linoleic and linoleic acids, which guts collect straw and plaque. It's the number one source of retinol, which boosts your immunological system. So it is the number one food on that. The people, 1937, the synthetic manufacturers. Look here. Uh, the cotton's made a little comeback, but most of more than half the fabric on earth today is synthetic. Uh, fuel. Uh, you know, the, the petrochemical companies are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to try to make the cannabis illegal, keep it illegal, or do some sort of false guys that address that's dangerous to it. Uh, medicine, it is the uh, is number one medicine on earth. It was the basis of more than 60% of the patent medicines on earth prior to its illegalization. The AMA just came out and said we're reversing a 72 year stand. It is a medicine. It's the number one medicine on earth for multiple sclerosis, and the number one medicine on earth for anorexia. A behavior tradition like blocking diseases like tuberculosis, AIDS, and cancer. Now, Harvard and Yale have studies that show that marijuana eats up cancer. Marijuana eats up cancer. Harvard and Yale are saying. And that is still illegal. The same people who want to open you all up with the economic competition and make it a new world order and global economy are the people that I call the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, and the SOPs. These are the people who see the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as impediments to the implementation of a new world order and global economy because they don't want you to have special rights that they can't offer to the rest of the world. And the Constitution guarantees you rights that no one else has as a citizen of any other type. The Constitution guarantees you the right to sovereignty to self-determination, but that is under attack because they can't offer those same guarantees. We don't have a world constitution. And nobody else treats our citizens like we can demand to be treated under our constitution.